A lot of folks in Texas are concerned about bobwhite quail. Uh, declines across the range of the United States have been serious. We've seen one state after another populations decline as much as 80, 90 percent, and Texas has not been immune to these declines. The core of the range now is pretty much Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma. Uh, we've still got huntable wild populations of quail, but within our state there are vast acreages where quail are something of the past. Once you get east of the I-35 corridor, um, quail can be a ghost in a whisper, just hanging out in remnants of habitat. And the only way we can bring back quail to these areas is to purposefully build habitat. And it's not easy. We didn't lose quail overnight, and we certainly won't get them back overnight. But fortunately, there are several groups around the state that have formed their own associations or initiatives, in particular one called the Wildlife Habitat Federation, where a group, group of folks got together and decided they wanted to do something for bobwhite quail. It was in 2004, we just, uh, a group of landowners came together and we uh, established the Wildlife Habitat Federation. And um, the idea was to decrease the amount of fragmentation in this area and create a, a sustainable population of birds by um, uh, creating more connectivity between the, um, the different ranches here. And we did this by creating a corridor. And ultimately this corridor, which is uh, about a mile wide here at our ranch, and, but uh, it's wider and narrow as you go down through the corridor. And the narrowest part, about 150 feet wide, it links us up with the Atwater Prairie Chicken Preserve. It, it provides the, 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 the uh, food, the water, and the cover and the space that we as humans need, but also that, uh, that wildlife needs to uh, sustain itself. One of the, the national initiative, one of their approaches is to build focus areas. And a focus area is basically just a, a really intense effort within a small area where you pull folks together and do something to improve habitat for bobwhite quail. And it's not really practical to do that at large scales because resources are thin and no individual entity or state agency or federal group can restore the millions of acres of habitat that's been lost for bobwhite and other upland species. But if you can get a group together and, and get everyone to come together, partner, share resources, share technical ability, and build it, and the quail come and document that, it's something that we would like to do and reproduce area after area after area. And right now, with the Texas Quail Conservation Initiative, we've got about four focus areas that we're working on with partners, with uh, joint ventures like the Oaks and Prairies Joint Venture, with partner groups like the Quail Coalition and National Wild Turkey Federation, and then individual landowner cooperatives like the Wildlife Habitat Federation around Columbus and Sealy that's been in existence for several years and have done a lot of positive things and on the surface have restored many acres of uh, native habitat. We started with this small area here of about 200 acres and uh, 2004, expanded that to 2,000 acres. That corridor, initial corridor, um, was represented by landowners that owned about 2,000 acres. Um, and the corridor was seven miles long. That became an even better model for showing landowners elsewhere as to how this can work. And, and we also saw response in the birds. Uh, Texas A&M found 31 species of upland birds in that in that original corridor. Um, since that time, uh, the, the uh, area covered by the Wildlife Habitat Federation has expanded to, uh, to now landowners that own around 40,000 acres. Our goal is to um, restore over 200,000 acres in five years. Another focus area in the state would be the Western Navarro bobwhite quail initiative, which is over Navarro and Ellis counties, which is just south of, of Dallas, a place you wouldn't typically think of being rich with bobwhite quail, but they've got a few around and they've got a few turkey as well. And the group of folks down there got together and decided the same thing as um, Wildlife Habitat Federation. They wanted to do something for birds and they wanted to be able to hear a bobwhite quail call and they wanted their kids to be able to hear a bobwhite quail call. So they've gone in and purposefully poisoned and destroyed what folks have been putting in for decades, uh, improved grasses, Bermuda, Bahia, because their purpose for buying their land was not to raise cattle, was not uh, to get an income from that, but folks these days that are moving out or getting a place in the country, they want similar things. They want to have uh, a place where they can observe wildlife, where they can uh, escape from 
the city and have a place where they can relax and, 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 get, and get back to nature. And uh, more and more folks are doing that and they want to know how they can. And the information's out there, but depending on where you are, it can be difficult. So uh, forming a cooperative and talking to your neighbors has multiple benefits. You're increasing the area that you're impacting because it's not just your acreage, it's other acreages as well. And when a group gets large enough, if they file for a tax exemption, for a 501c3 tax exemption, for instance, then they become eligible for grants and state and federal programs. And once they do that, they can leverage those dollars with private groups like Quail Coalition, and National Wild Turkey Federation. And before you know it, the group's got some fire equipment, some wagons, maybe a seed drill, maybe they've got some grants to get um, some actual native seeds where they can put in the ground, and it just builds and it just steamrolls from there. Wildlife Habitat Federation, um it uh, has regular meetings and uh, field demonstrations so that we can, that are used to educate uh, neighboring landowners and those not so close to us that uh, what is needed to really uh, restore uh, uh, native habitat so as to bring back the uh, this bobwhite quail and other upland birds. In the process of, of trying to restore uh, the habitat, uh, we had to, of course, have more equipment and, and more um, knowledge of how to use that equipment to bring back the native, native plants and the habitat. So that entailed buying uh, more equipment and that uh, specialized equipment, especially, the, especially we needed like uh, 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 no-till drills or, or now we've recently purchased a, a native grass uh, seed harvester. All these things uh, <clears throat> were created because of the, the grants we received, but also the cooperation we got from private individuals that, co that, that uh, contributed to this cause. So one of the benefits, of course, a major benefit of the uh, Wildlife Habitat Federation was the ability to accumulate the, the inputs we needed to do this restoration work. One of the things that prompted us to get the Wildlife Habitat uh, Federation going was the fact that uh, there was a lot of people talk about what to do, but not many people actually trying to put it on the ground. So the Wildlife Habitat Federation uh, became a model for the, uh, showing others that it could be done and, and how it could be done. So we, uh, so we now have created a, um, a process, and this process is called the Habitat Action Team, whereby we provide landowners with the uh, knowledge and, uh, and also the equipment of how to bring back habitat based on the situation that, that they have at their particular range or site.